Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is Alex Bennett, and this is the Ramble, kind of coming on late tonight, uh, because we had some real uh, we had some real technical problems going on here, and uh, I still have them going on here, and they will continue to go on here. Uh, it's uh, it's not uh, it's been been hell, uh, and it always happens just before I'm about ready to go on the air. All of a sudden. Everything went bad again. I don't know. There's some glitch in my system that when I occasionally bring on Zoom and I bring on my switcher, uh, all of a sudden everything goes wonky and I have to reboot and I have to pull out USB ports to make it work. And then I came back on and I couldn't get a, a decent chroma key for me here in my background, right? This thing here. Maybe you can hear it. Uh, you, it doesn't make it wiggle. Uh, and uh, just, you know, it was amazing. Um, and it was a real problem tonight. And it looks like one of my cameras has gone bad, is what it's all about. So anyway, I just, you know, I and I don't understand why the machine does this glitch, okay, of itself. Uh, and I have no idea why that is, but it shouldn't be, you know. And um, this was the, uh, let's see here, was this the camera I was using? Yeah, it was the camera I was using over there, and I bought a new one. This is the new one now, right here. And this is the, uh, well, you can't see that one over there. It's, anyway, so I figured I would try to come on tonight. Let me, let me go over to my Facebook page and uh, remove something that says that there will be no show tonight. Uh, uh, so there is a show tonight, so there will be a show. Let me see here. Let me just, uh, I'll edit the post. Uh, there will be a show. Uh, there is a show tonight. Okay. All right. There we go. Mm -hmm. And that's so everybody can know there's a show tonight. There's a show tonight. There's a show tonight. Anyway, um... I don't know if anybody's going to be calling because I don't know if anybody realizes that we were off or that we were on or whatever. I'm just getting, I'm getting so exhausted by all of this. But at least I got, uh, I got my, uh, I got my video going pretty good here, my cameras. The other camera is, looks like it's shot, which means that when I do my Monday show, I'm going to have to move this camera over to here to use it, uh, to use a good camera on that machine, so... It just, it just, it just never stops, okay? Uh, one thing after another, one problem after another. And I had a really good interview tonight I was going to run. I'll write in tomorrow night with uh, uh, our good friend uh, 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 Steve Kravitz, who is really terrific uh, and does a really nice job of it. And uh, we had a good time. And he even does some mime on the on the interview that we do. So uh, that's really good radio. If anybody's listening to the audio only, sorry about that. But anyway, it, it you know, we got everything. So it's kind of like everything looks like it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it okay? Is it all right? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. It's just uh, who knows what it is. I, I, you know, it is what it is, what it is, what it is. Okay. And we'll just hope that uh, it doesn't happen again. Uh, but it will, <laughs> because this is just a clusterfuck, as it were. All right? All righty. Okay, let me see here. Let me, let me, I only have one participant ready to go here. So let me just admit Alan so that he will feel that he's loved. Okay? Wait a minute. Here comes Alan. There he is. Uh, oh, and I have to do this uh, gallery. There we go. And now uh, we've got uh, uh, just the two of us. 
Hi, Alan. How are you? Thank you. For, Hi. Thank you. How are you doing? Thank you for hanging in there. Uh, oh, no problem. No earlier, problem. E earlier, Charlie Wallace tried to get on, and somebody else I can't remember who, and it was uh, uh, it was not uh, 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 somebody that it was I was uh, it was somebody I don't know who, but it's somebody, it, Snooky anybody. or some name like that, and I don't know who it was supposed to be. But anyway, we'll do this for as long as we can. If other oh, people, it's always good to see you. If other people join us tonight on this. Uh, but I thought, you know, it's kind of my the show must go on kind of ethic. Absolutely. And, and, and when finally I got everything working again, uh, it, uh, you know, it improved stuff. Uh, but I kept trying to adjust cameras and everything. And I think it turns out it was actually one bad camera I had here. Huh. My, 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 believe it or not, my older version of the, uh, or is it the newer? No, this is the older Um uh, Fios, uh, Brio, rather. So, uh, you know, you said they were having troubles with them or something. Oh, yeah, there was some kind of recall on some of them or something. You might go on Logitech's website and see what you can find. Yeah. Maybe it's just a software download or something. I don't know. It could be, but I mean, it, it, I, it really. Yeah, I don't have one, so. It really um, glitched on me. Uh, you know, who knows why? You know, no, there's no telling. Right, but right. I'll I'll figure it out tomorrow. Uh, but I didn't, you know. The problem is that when I start, this whole thing starts falling apart just before uh -huh. I'm ready to go on. Um, it it uh, uh, it's very hard to get it all back up again in time. Right, and this happened about what is it? What I was just setting things up and testing them and everything, and all of a sudden, same thing happened that happened the other day, which was. All my hard drives went out, and all my stuff that was into USB ports. So then I tried to reboot the machine, and it wouldn't reboot. And I unloaded the USB ports, and then it it loaded. Then I could get everything working by plugging it back in. <clears throat> but I don't know why that is. You know, with Microsoft, if all else fails, reboot. Well, it isn't Microsoft. Oh, whoops. Hey, whoops. Yeah. Now this is uh, Snooky, whoever that is. Huh. Let's see if we if we recognize Snooky. Oh, now you see that uh, connecting this audio. This is going to be this is going to be a bad thing here. You watch, you watch. Oh, you and I can see each other. That's all yeah. that's important, yeah. right? Yeah. Hello, Snooky. Can you talk to us? No, Snooky is going to try and do something terrible. So we're just going to get rid of Snooky. Uh, let's see here. Where do I go? Ah. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Snooky might have somebody with uh, some big, nice, big tits or something. No, well, you know, uh, <laughs> I would rather admit someone who uh, is uh, is worthy of of our trust. Okay. Um, but uh, there's uh, there's uh, John Larkin. Hello, John. Larkin. How are you? This the, is... He must have got a new camera or something. He looks a lot bigger. Okay, let me get rid of uh, Snooky here. Remove Snooky, and report to Zoom. Yeah, I'll report to Zoom. And then, see, the trouble is when I report to Zoom. See this, folks. They ask me a whole bunch of questions, and I don't want to answer a whole bunch of questions. So mm -hmm. I just go, uh, I, I don't want to include a screenshot, no, and then I want to submit it. So thank you for submitting your report. See that, folks? I get that message now. Everybody, is everybody happy? Okay, good. Where is everybody? Uh, uh, here, here comes Jeff Stein joining us. Good, good, good. Yeah, yeah. But it, it just, you know, I mean, I, I'm so tired of this. I'm so exhausted, you know. Um, here comes Snooky again, entered the waiting room. Snooky's really trying hard tonight. It, could Snooky be somebody I know? Let me see here. I'm still waiting. I always got to get my finger on the remove. Snooky, are you there? Huh? No, Snooky's now got their not hasn't got the camera on, but they've got their microphone on. Snooky, can you hear us? No, Snooky can't hear us. So we will remove Snooky again, and this time I'm not going to report to Zoom, okay? Because I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. Snooky has been removed. Anyway, so it's you know it's just one cluster fuck thing after another here. And 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 that that becomes a constant problem for me. 
and I, I, you know, I really don't know what to what to do about it. You know, okay. I mean, it's just um, maybe I'll just go down to one day a week, and you know what'll happen on that one day a week? What's that? This, you know, the problem that I had. So, um, here comes Jeff Stein. Okay, admit Jeff Stein. So we get Jeff in here. Okay. Mm hmm. Okay, Jeff, turn on your microphone so we can hear you. That'll be fine. What? Are you there, Jeff? We can't hear him. Yeah, but he's he, your, your mic is uh, your mic is uh, open, Jeff. Huh? <laughs> here we go again. <laughs> Uh, hey, listen, you're having technical problems. I'm having technical problems. Oh, oh there you are. I can hear him. Talk, talk to him. Now we can hear you. Volume's low, that's all. The volume's low. Ah, uh, okay. Do you have to turn the volume up? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. Technology. Listen, I, 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 I don't blame you. I... Uh, uh, I take this pill for my neuropathy. It's called gab uh, it's called pregabalin, which I call it's the Jerry Lewis drug. Pregabalin. And um, um, it makes it I sleep really well on it and my feet don't hurt at night. You know, my neuropathy doesn't act up. But the next day for the rest of the day I'm completely loopy. Like I did this interview today with uh, with uh, Steve Kravitz, and I accidentally pushed the on-air button as well as the record button, and uh, the show that then went, it went out as a show. Everybody could have seen it live. So, mm. you know, I mean, that was just one of the things I did today that was a complete master fuck up. So, yeah, yeah. I uh, was hoping that Robert would be here. <clears throat> well, he didn't. He, After last night's little spiel, he usually leaves, says what he wants, and he's gone for a few days. Yeah, well, don't say anything nasty about him. I'm hearing? not going to say anything nasty. It's just that he said I said some things and went back and watched the video on YouTube that I talked about HR 127, mm -hmm. and half of what he said I didn't say. So, but that being said, that part that he said, he wrote, was he a wrote, lot of, he wrote, what a lot of, what he, a lot of people say. He wrote so. me and said he was, he was sorry that he, he acted the way he did. He said, but that you had done something, which besmirched New Yorkers. You had said something, and that bothered him. You, well, okay, I, I don't know. I've been very supportive of him, so I don't. Well, here, he, here he comes. Know. Here he comes. Here, here he comes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, he's joining. Kind of his... caught me off guard. I mean, you know, yeah. what am I supposed to say? I'm a big boy. I can, if I said something that upset well, him. Well, look, this is just all give and take here. It, yeah. You know, hello, Robert. We 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 got on late tonight. We've had nothing but troubles, but the video looks pretty good of me, doesn't it? It's look all yes, right. Yes, it does. Good. Everybody's video except for John's looks good. Yeah. Call me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello, Robert. How are you this evening? I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, you, uh, you felt bad about you going after Alan last night and Alan felt bad about you having gone after him last night. Uh, I, I, I think Alan missed the entire point and that <laughs> was, I took exception to the fact that you made a fucking wisecrack about New Yorkers. There was no need for that. My mother was a New Yorker. My son is currently a New Yorker. You did the same thing when you said all Democrats are in favor of taking your guns away. No. You have a oh, let's, let's not start, let's not, let's not start it up you again. You have a tendency to want to generalize and stereotype people, and I just won't let you do that. Oh, well, that's okay. I'm glad you're keeping me in check, but you're doing the same thing. How so? Huh? How How well, so? Yeah, last night you jumped on me and I was unprepared. I didn't know what to say. I'd let you For run. having said a wisecrack about New Yorkers. Okay. Why the sarcasm? Because I'm a sarcastic person. Well, then fuck that. You know, that's bullshit. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's, let's well, all you, hold you on. You'd rather get over it or let you me, don't. Let me, hold on a second. Let me let's be the peacemaker. Grab one, I'll grab the other. Yeah, let me be the peacemaker here, <laughs> okay? Let's just... 
take it down a notch, both of us, all both of you, and I will take it down a notch as well. Uh, I, I understand, you know, I understand how Robert feels that way because especially out here in New York and on the East Coast, we're very protective of ourselves. I know. Uh, you know, would you agree with that, Robert? That I don't care where you come from. Nobody, nobody is going to sit there and listen to that kind of snotty generalization. No matter where you live, you're just it's not going to yeah. accept that from someone. But I'll talk about the Bay Area like it too, where I live. So well, why then? Why be such a negative individual? Why oh, so I negative? Oh. I'm sarcastic. Are you alone? Are negative. you sad? You know, are you a sad me, person? I wouldn't call me a sarcastic negative. Boy, I was I happy to see. No, <laughs> I, I, I actually, it surprised me that you take offense to something I said about New York because a month ago I said something negative about New Jersey. Yeah, I took offense then too. What well, I, I mean, I, I'm sorry. your sarcasm <laughs> comes out with every third sentence, so you got to pick your spots, you know. <laughs> oh well, let's. Can we? Can sarcasm's we, the lowest right. form of humor, Alan. It's the lowest form. Wait a minute, humor. what? What? And it, a lot of people minute, like me because of my sarcasm. I thought puns Robert. were the lowest. Form wait a minute, no, 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 puns aren't. Uh, but sarcasm. I don't know. I. I kind of am a fan of sarcasm. Well, there we go. You know, I mean, I, have I to got say somebody that. on my side. <laughs> I, I will. You didn't I will, say that. Uh, wait, a minute, Robert, wait, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Talk. Hold on a second, Alan. Am I sarcastic? Yeah, Alex, okay. you are, but you don't put people down oh. in so doing. Oh, okay. Okay. That's the difference. You know, he, in effect, put down people that I care greatly about, and there was no call for it. Ooh. What he said simply wasn't true. Who did I you know, New Yorkers you? aren't all nasty, as you characterize. That was just a, a bullshit comment. It had no place in the show. Oh, anything goes in the show, I thought. Especially oh, New Yorkers. No. They used to be so ironic. But after 9-11, <laughs> irony was dead, right? <laughs> there Whatever. you are. Another, another, another negative New York uh, comment. Thank you. So what is I, irony? I don't I never understood that thing. What did that mean? Remember at 9-11 they were all saying irony is dead. What? What is that? I don't get it. I don't remember that. Can, can I, I, don't, know, I don't remember I don't that. Irony is that. dead? Yeah, I no, don't know. It's Robert had been sarcastic thing. since I came After on the show. They were like, this is the end of irony. I was like, what? Well, what's that? I don't get it. Why? I don't know. And now here are a few pleasant wait a minute. And now a few pleasant words from Jeff and Charlie. Go, go ahead, guys. First of all, yeah. Both of these arguments, people, I like them both. I like that both of them have to uh, turn your volume up. up. Turn your volume up. We can't hear you, Jeff. Volume. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I mean, we can hear him, but it's very low. Okay, we're well, gonna be quiet. Yeah. Let him say what he wants to say again, please. How's this? That's better. Just be closer to the screen when you talk, and it'll go ahead and say it over. Uh, I was saying both guys who are arguing are good arguers, and by themselves, I always like what you guys have to say, and I like your perspective. And but. You know, sometimes you piss both of the speech off, and it's it's really not nice. It's just a waste. Stop wasting your time or our time with that. But got a good all. argument. Yeah. Okay, as here's, far here's as the New York thing. I mean, come on, I'm a New Yorker. I grew up in New York and I lived here for a long time. I went to school there and all that crap. College. High school, junior high school. I love New York. As much a New Yorker as anybody. <laughs> Look, he's wearing a cap. Even though the Yankees are, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so my New York comments are strictly sarcastic. I have a lot of friends that live in New York. I have friends that live in New Jersey, but I'm a sarcastic person. Yeah, so and I don't like that. What's that? I like that. Okay. Cool. I, I think you're going. You're getting overruled, Robert. I like your personality, Robert, and I don't want you to be upset with me. 
And I don't want to say things that would upset you, but what am I supposed to be censored when everybody else is not? No, no. Say whatever you like. But I, then I'm going to come back at you. Yeah, you, you're welcome uh, to do that. Uh, yeah, Did you yeah, see but... me cry or anything last night? You're, you're welcome to your <laughs> a opinion. A little bit. I thought I, I thought I saw a tear come on, uh, down your eye there at one point. Um, you know, I, I was kind of surprised. You kind of caught me off guard. I mean. I had to go back and watch the video where I talked about HR 127 mm -hmm. and half of what you said about me that I said, I didn't say. Such as. But, but, but such as that the, the, that the Democrats are going to take guns away from everybody. I didn't say that. But the Republicans say that all the time. So it, I could see how you could get confused of what I said and what the Republicans say. And that's all. I mean, you know, I don't know the other so thing. You're right? saying, hold on. So you're saying that at no time on the ramble did you say that most Democrats favor gun control? That's not. You that, never said that on no, the I, ramble. I wish I, I could. I, I wish. I wish I could say whether. Said he, wait a minute. Hold, I said. Hold on, on a second. I I wish I could sit here and say that I heard that, but I didn't hear that. But I didn't not hear that either. It's. Just, I may have been paying attention to something I, else around I here. Would, I would partly agree with you, Robert, that most Republicans say, oh, you're going to lose your guns. I'm not talking time. about Republicans. I don't think I'm most Republicans say you. that either. I think there are Republicans okay. who are, I have to say, there are some uh, Republicans out there who are decent people. Uh, more. You know, what? Yeah. Less and less. Yeah. I'll tell you what's yeah. happening. They're all becoming independents is what they're doing. If they can't stand the Republicans anymore, they're becoming independents. And I think that's going to hurt their party as well. So uh, I'm, I, I didn't get on the show to protect your feelings, Robert. But at the same time, that being said, I'm usually not a vindictive person. Okay. And... So if I said something that bothered you over New Jersey or New York, it was strictly sarcasm because I've been to both places and I love them. New York is the most beautiful city in the world to me. Uh, yeah, but but uh, Obviously, but you don't live here. Otherwise, you wouldn't believe that. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't live there because I was born and raised in my work career. I mean, was most here. of us are looking for the exit, okay? Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> you know? but, but there you go. There's some sarcasm. So anyhow... No, it's you know, not. It's not sarcasm. I got to tell you, I'm, I would move out of this city in a second. You are it, welcome. I, I will always take your criticism, Robert. You're welcome to. Well, if I say something that bothers you, that's what's nice about this show. You can tell me. Okay, but I was trying to make a point here about New York. Oh, that okay. I would I would move out of New York in a heartbeat, but my aunt Marjorie won't. She loves it. So you know, you do what the wife says. You know, yeah, we're all a little a older. Don't take life so seriously. Either that, either that, I would get out of New York City. I'd go upstate, you know, somewhere like that. Because the city has become, it, it to begin with, it's dangerous. We found out now that if uh, if a disease is going to come to come to New York City, you're right in the fire of it. Uh, so a lot of people are just moving out for that reason. You know, they're not well, moving out because it's not a wonderful place to live. I mean... God, you know, this is a town that has more culture in it than you can ever take in a and that, lifetime. And that's what's killing people is the culture. That I'm, I'm, what do you mean it's killing people? I, I'm being sarcastic again. Oh, okay. About the disease that you just said is killing people. Put up a sign so we know. Yeah, I was going to say we should have a sign that goes up that goes sarcasm, sarcasm, sarcasm. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, I guess I didn't get on the show. I got on the show. You know what I think your problem is? I think your sarcasm isn't broad enough. <laughs> you know, it's not like oh. if you're going to do sarcasm and it's going to work, you have to do it so people don't say, but, did he merely mean that? They, I, I they should never say, think, huh? I honestly think we need a thesaurus here. When you say all New Yorkers or you imply that all New Yorkers are nasty, that isn't sarcasm at all that's just a biting remark and people mm -hmm. may or may not take offense to that yeah, i don't on. see that as sarcasm at all if you look I, it up by I, definition I, 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 I'll, I'll buy that uh, but uh, give me the the, the video for example the, let me get let me give you an example if i were to say somewhere during the course of the conversation mm -hmm. 
that I think that all Bay Area cops are gun-obsessed bastards, you may or may not take offense to that. And if you do take offense to that, I don't think I have the right to fall back on, oh, well, I'm sarcastic. And that was sarcasm, and you either accept it or you don't. You're still bothered by it because it's a mass generalization that improves the conversation not one iota. Well, well, Alex has got me three against none for you, but I'm not going to go into all that. You, that. I would take that as your opinion, and I may or may not argue it or try to argue it, but that's your opinion, Robert. Well, we let, me, let, me, let me say question. something here. But well, it isn't my opinion. Yeah, but, let, you're let, missing the point yeah. as usual. Uh, let, okay, me, let, me say, let me say point some, point let me say something here, okay? Um, uh, uh, I, I like Robert a lot. I like Robert because... He's very, he's intelligent. He's well informed. He's well read, uh, I, and I just happen to think he's also his wit makes me laugh. All right. That being said, I also like you too, Alan. You know, but uh, I and I hate to see the two of you fighting, because uh, you you both have something to say on this program, and I would hate to think that you'll always be sniping at each other, and that I don't want to see. You know. Because I, I think a lot of both of you. It's like I got t- two children, and I don't want to have to pick the favorite one, you know. But I so, do. I do like so, Robert a lot, and his his coming on this program and starting to come on this program, I think, really helped it along in a lot I, of. Ways. I like Robert too. He's got a lot of good comments. Yeah. yeah. You know, I I don't like being ambushed well, like last well, well, night. Well, okay. But, but I'm also a big boy. Uh, okay. So okay. We understand all of that. Let's go to Charlie. Charlie, you have any take on this? Well, I don't like making generalizations about people, so I don't even joke about that. Okay, all right. So you're you're, you're kind of in a way in a way you're 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 against uh, Robert Allen's uh, sarcasm. Well. I think I understand when he's being sarcastic, so I don't take it seriously. But, you know, it's it's not something I would say. I don't even make a joke about all cab drivers or whatever. You know, I I just, I in my life, I like to treat everybody I meet as an individual person and try and figure out what that individual person is like. Yeah. Well, I mean. you'll You'll never hear me say is you'll never hear me say anything racist or uncaring okay but but you people. can say but you can say things you have to understand it is it's the way in which you say them you talk about sarcasm okay it has to be delivered sarcastically uh, that is a prerequisite you can say things in two ways you know you can say um, sure i hate jews okay in two ways sure i hate jews or sure, I hate Jews. You know, I mean, right. it, it it has two entirely different meanings. One is I'm saying, yeah, sure, I hate Jews. It's all context. It's all context, and 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 yeah. uh, I think what bothers Robert maybe is that he felt that your sarcasm wasn't being well presented uh, as sarcasm. And so he took it personally because he he has a, his mother was a New Yorker, family came from New York. You were originally from New York, Robert? Not me. No, my mom is, it was born and raised in Brooklyn and lived in Manhattan. Mm-hmm. And my son has lived in Brooklyn for nine years. My mother was born and raised in the Bronx. There you go. Back when it was a fairly decent place to live. And I, I remember taking my mother back there in the uh, in the uh, 70s when I got here. And um, she said, I don't want to see my old neighborhood. And I took her back up to the Bronx and she said, what happened to my neighborhood? And I had to inform her what happened to her neighborhood was about 70 years. <laughs> okay. Which to a lot of people, you know, as you get older, you get to think of, I, I, I think about... Um, you know, people that I, I first met in, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in 92, let's say. And then I suddenly realized, that's 30 years ago. 
you know? Yeah. And then all of a sudden you, you say the other thing, which is, where the fuck did all that time go? You know, it just, it went by, it's, it, it went by slowly, but it went by too fast. Yeah. You know, it yeah. could have gone by a lot slower. Yeah. And it never stops. It's not like you can put your heels in the ground and slow down time, you know, and say, okay, I'm holding it back. No, it just keeps going. And here I find myself 81, and I'm going, 92? That was 29 years ago? By the way, I came up with that because of the Woody Allen thing that was been going on. And I went, you know, that's, nine, that's 29 years ago. I think it's about time Mia got over it, you know? Yeah. Um, but uh, but that's that's the way in which I uh, you know I do well, things. That begs, that begs the question: What was what's the purposes of, of that uh, documentary anyway? Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, I wish I could answer that one for you. It doesn't make any sense. It's a story that's been told in the same exact way yeah. numerous times over the last twenty nine years. Yeah. Yeah. And you would think by now they'd been a little tired of telling the same, you know, Mia's story over and over again. Because Woody doesn't want to do an interview about it, you know. He's, he, he has the dignity to stay away from it. Uh, but They're just trying to ruin his life, you know. And I'm not defending him. I don't know what happened there. Well, you know, let's, do... let's, uh, let's forget about Woody because I think everybody's a little tired of the Woody Allen discussion. But let's talk about something that's happening right now, and that's Mario uh, Andrew Cuomo. Yeah. I mean, what's happening to him, I think, is unconscionable. And yeah. I'll tell you why. He went on the air today. He did a mea culpa. He said, I'm sorry if somebody was bothered by any action that I did. First of all, he said this whole thing of going up to people and hugging them and kissing them. Yeah. This, it, he got from his father. His whole family, they were Italians. They kiss, they kiss everybody. Remember the dude in the 70s, the hug guy, the best-selling author and stuff? Yeah. That Leo yeah. Buschio. He'd, yes. he'd be busted, uh, yeah. and thrown out of fucking... He'd never get yeah. his book published. And he said, I, I'm just used to when I, when I meet up with somebody that I know or I like or whatever, I, I will hug them and I will, or I will kiss them, male or female, you know? That's just the, the, the that culture time. I grew up in. But then yeah. he said, if anybody was upset by that, by my actions, and, and took them in the wrong way, I'm very, very sorry because I don't want to have offend anybody or make anybody feel bad. And I thought it was a great apology. And what do they do the minute the MSNBC throws it back to them and he get away from the press conference? Oh, he, he, in the press conference, he says, I'm just asking that you not have an opinion and you not take a position until you've heard what the attorney general has to say about the case. Okay? Be that fair with me. And I, I think we would all agree that's a fairly good idea, right? To be fair about that. And immediately they throw it back to MSNBC's anchors and they're suddenly going, oh yeah, that wasn't much of, a, uh, uh, of an apology. Oh, he, I'm sure he probably did it. Blah, 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 blah. He should be thrown out of office because blah, blah. And, and I'm going, didn't you hear what the man just said? Wait for the attorney general to come out with a, with a decision on this thing. He said, and then we can yell and scream about it. But please find don't find me guilty before they've, acu before they've found me guilty or innocent or whatever. I mean, it, and, and he's right. I was, just, I was just appalled by the way MSNBC handled this thing today. He's not being charged or, or accused of any crimes. No, listen, we have gone from yeah. instances of rape, yeah. okay? Rape, like with Bill Cosby and the drug rapes and so on. We've, we've gone all the way down to holding somebody's face. Yeah. You know, yeah. so what is what is the what's the crime? I mean, do we say that that Bill Cosby, the, what Bill, Bill Cosby did was just or what what uh, Cuomo did was just as terrible as what Bill Cosby did? Yeah, I mean, yeah. let's let's not. We've really gone. You know, do we even going? We've even gone further than uh, than uh, Louis C.K. pulling out his penis. Yeah. You know, I mean, 
Cuomo did none of this. And they're going, oh, my God, it was an affront to women what he did. It was horrible. Asking her, uh, you know, did she ever cheat on her boyfriend or whatever? Yeah, you know. And, you know, and I said, I, I said the, on the last show, I said, oh, he's a perv. And he said, no, he's not a perv. I said, I meant, I didn't mean like a real perv. I meant like a, a small P perv, you know? Yeah, Just, but, but all I'm saying like, is, is that, that when we talk about the Woody thing and now this, I mean, come on, you know, there's got to be some sense of, of, of decency about letting somebody have his day in court before you accuse him of anything. You know, yeah. so I mean, I'm so prudish. The whole society is becoming. Yes, mean, yeah. Just being prudes. Absolutely, um, Robert. You have any feeling on this? I um, hmm. I'm torn about this. I don't. I don't. I find that I don't agree with you about this, um, but, but not totally. Um, I don't know. I, I'm I'm leery of getting into a situation where we go back in time to a time when women were not heard. Right. And I think. Um, no, and I agree I with agree that. I agree with you that these weren't crimes. John makes the good point that no crime has been committed yet. Um, I think we have to understand that that. The times have changed, and probably for the better, where a woman's space is considered in ways that maybe it wasn't back in the 50s and 60s, where a pat on the ass was considered, you know, oh, come on, I'm not, it's no big deal. Well, why should she have to deal with that? You know, so there's a part of me that feels the way you do, Alex, but then there's the other part of me that's really reticent to um, to sort of just poo-poo the incident as if nothing was done wrong. Crime, no. Inappropriate, probably. Yeah, and, I agree. I agree. But he's, I think he's paying his price by being, you know, public, publicly humiliated and shamed. Perhaps so. Perhaps so. Perhaps so. Well, uh, I'll go to you in a second, Alan. Uh, you know, it, it is a matter of the of fact that yeah, times have changed a great deal. But you, number one, put this in the context of something else, too. He's a single guy, all right? So he's he's probably somewhat on the make. You know, he's getting into a discussion with a woman because maybe he'd like to right. go out with her. He'd like to see her. He's asking some some questions here and there. I mean, but there that's was... that's not there, license. There was know, no... There was no, he grabbed my pussy, okay? Yeah. There, yeah. there was nothing... Yeah, he didn't even go that, that but, far. I mean... What we're getting down to is something so minute. Yes, women should be believed, but not to the exclusion of also believing the man. In other words, do we suddenly say any woman that comes forward with some kind of accusation like this has to be believed just simply on the basis that she's a woman? And I think that I think that I think that's dangerous to all of us as men. Because I'm glad I'm not in the dating pool anymore. You know, because if somebody could suddenly say, I was really offended by that. Well, why did you wait this many years before you brought it up? Okay? You know? I mean, I, I, I think that, yes, I mean, I always have respected women, and I believe women should be believed in a lot of cases, but not to the exclusion of fairness to the men. In other words, yes, they can say what they say, but everybody doesn't have to necessarily say because she's the woman in the case, she is to be believed. Because I'll tell you, there are a lot of women out there who are lying fucks because they want to get even with somebody or they've had an experience or whatever, and this was a perfect opportunity to accuse somebody. So that's possible too. So, let you know, I agree with him. Wait till you see what the, what the uh, what the attorney general has to say, and then judge me. Yes, John. Yeah, I don't, not to change the subject, but you know, young kids nowadays, especially these young girls, because and I know this because because I work at at a rock club, mm -hmm. and we would put on a lot of these um, they call them electronic dance music shows that would attract a lot of you know sixteen, seventeen, eighteen year olds, mm -hmm. and these girls show up at these concerts fucking literally in in dressed in underwear half ass naked and and you know 
I can't believe it. I mean, you don't expect a fucking, you know, could you, could like, you give me the address of your club, please? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm, I'm like fucking 63 years old, you know, I'm fucking look, curving out. Look, I, I don't see. care. I look, I believe this ever since I was a kid. I don't care what a woman wears. She doesn't deserve to be raped. Okay? No, no, I don't no. consider provocative dressing to be provocation to suddenly take liberties in a way which you're not allowed to. You can try by asking, by yeah. wooing, by being seductive. Uh, that, I think, it, suppose, I think, I don't think that's against the law yet, but I don't think you have the right to make an advance unless that person wants you to make that advance. Now, how do you know the difference? You got to be psychic these days. Yes, uh, uh, Alan. So um, I agree with you on this, um, uh, and I I believe the one thing you left out of your last uh, sentence or the sentence before was that I think you can also get on your hands and knees and beg. I don't think that's illegal yet. And uh, but yeah, I I don't I don't. Think what do you mean that, by that? Uh, what do you mean you can get on your hands and knees and? Well, beg? you were you were talking about the different ways that you can ask. You can beg, you, you know, I just think you can get on your hands and knees and say, I, 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 I here I'm being sarcastic again. And you, so I, I'll that, clarify that. It never worked for me. Wait, wait, Charlie? <laughs> See, John got it. Charlie? No, it never worked for me either, but yeah. I've seen guys get on their hands and knees and, uh, or, or something close to that and say, look, really, I'm, okay. I'm, you know, yeah. I, I'm special. I'm not like all the other guys or whatever sales mm -hmm. point. You have. Char but once you Char touch the woman, okay. uh, once yeah, you yeah. touch all right, the woman, all right, yeah, without permission, I think that goes over. Charlie's going to get all feeling to his hand if he doesn't get to talk here. <laughs> Go ahead. Yes, Charlie. I think the Me Too movement has been kind of misinterpreted a little bit. I don't think they mean that every woman that ever makes an accusation is telling the God's honest truth. All they're saying is that when a woman makes an accusation, take it seriously and investigate it. Yeah. That's all they mean. They don't mean yeah, but that the woman is always right and there's no woman that ever lied about it or whatever. I'll tell you what happens, though. If, if, a, if a woman accuses a guy, he's going to have a pretty hard time disproving it. You know, in a he said, she said situation, it should be hard for either person to disprove right. it. Right, right. But, but, the, but, the, but the proof is on... The person being accused, and that sounds a lot like McCarthyism to me. And there's another side to this. Yeah. During, during the hearings for Kavanaugh, mm -hmm. the Republicans constantly made the point, well, there's no proof, well, there's no proof, well, there's no proof. Well, how many fucking times is there proof of a rape? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, how many, uh, uh, how many uh, times uh, are there witnesses to a rape? Unless they do a semen sample right there on the spot, and yeah. even that doesn't prove a rape, how many times are you going to find what people well, will consider it, It's funny. Proof? In the Kavanaugh situation, they actually had a person who was willing to come forward and corroborate and what, she was blocked. what she said, and she, he, she was blocked. So, yeah, so what could have been the proof, okay, was not allowed to be heard. Um uh, I, you know, I, it, it is just that the, it, it, it is, you just get accused and that's all it takes. You know, I mean, l let's look at the Me Too thing and all the people that have lost their jobs. I'll give you a good example. I mean, and I don't, I hear he's a terrible person. I don't want to defend him. And he's probably an asshole and guilty of anything you want to say he's guilty of. But Kevin Spacey was, was, char was charged, found innocent and has never been found guilty of anything. Nope. When's the last time you saw Kevin Spacey? Did everybody say, oh, well, you've got found innocent. Uh, come on back to the movie industry. No. 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 And my friend Louis C.K., hell, what did he do? He admitted to it. He admitted that he asked these women in a room if he could pull out his penis, and when nobody said no, he did, which I think he... He really should be lauded as a gentleman for asking, you know. Uh, but is is Louis C.K. working? No. Did he get back all the TV shows he had on FX? No. Did he did he get another movie deal? No. He can barely get a club to work in. So I mean, 
this is guilt without a trial, and your entire career is ruined. I mean, Woody Allen's career right now is being ruined by Mia Farrow at this point. He's very, uh, people don't want to invest in movies with him. And uh, it, it's terrible. And, and Woody has not been, he, in fact, there have been investigations into that case, and they've all found him not guilty of what he, people are accusing him of. But yet, he's going to find it pretty hard to find work these days. And he's old, too, so he would find it hard anyway. But it's doubly hard now. Yes, Alan. So um, along before the, the women's movement and Black Lives Matter and all the other groups that have come along um, uh, for the good, for the better of humanity um, in, in the past couple of years, children. There's been no thing on children. But if a child accuses a teacher or a somebody, a, a, a person, over, a priest or whatever uh, of an accusation, uh, a lot of times those people are without a trial and without proof are looking down upon forever. Well, the McMartin Preschool is a perfect example. Right. Um, in San Francisco or wherever it, it, it is. It around. was down in, I can't remember, it was in L.A., down around L.A. Oh, okay, and and uh, they were accused of, uh, of most of the teachers at the school of molesting children. And the children came forward and said, yes, he molested me and so on and so forth. Well, they found out that all these students had been coached and that they had been had, had false memories put in their head, literally. Uh, and by by prosecutors and everybody else. And eventually, the people who were found guilty, I think except for one, were all found innocent of the charges. And it wasn't a matter that it was a whitewash. I mean, it turned out they were not guilty of anything. The, 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 the sad part about this is, is that everybody's career that was there, and a lot of teachers, a lot of probably good teachers, uh, was ruined. Even, even though they they were found innocent. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Absolutely. yes, Robert. I, I've been out of the classroom for 30 years, but I re clearly remember one of the first things that we were taught as male teachers mm -hmm. is to never be put in a situation. I mean, I did mostly seventh and eighth grade mm -hmm. uh, translation puberty. Yes. Um, and one of the first things that we were trained to do was if a young lady stayed behind after class to ask you a question, mm -hmm. you encouraged her to ask that question out in the hall yeah. under the guise that you had to watch the class leave the room or some other such. Sure. Or if she decided she wanted to stay after to get some extra help, you invited a teacher's aide of the female gender to sit in the room with you both mm -hmm. uh, in order to yeah. protect yourself. But for every one case of somebody being falsely accused that I know of, I know 25 of people who were never accused that ought to have been accused. Yes. No. So I'm more interested in protecting those young ladies mm -hmm. or men or young boys yeah, absolutely. Um, than I am about the odd case where somebody is incorrectly, ha you know, has a finger pointed at them. That's far more rare, at least in my experience. You know, what was always interesting to me was the, uh, the uh, women teachers and male students. Especially in Florida, all these stories seem to come out yeah. of Florida, except for the the big one, which took place, I think, in Oregon. Um, and uh, 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 it, it always kind of amazed me that I, what I said about those guys, those boys, was the, dip, the difference between a male and a woman and a girl is is really the act of penetration. Because in the case of a guy, what's What's the worst that happens to him if his female teacher comes on to him and has sex with him? The worst is he's going to get a very bad hand from all the high fives he's going to have to do later on. You know, so it's a whole different story where boys are concerned from, from girls. But I'm just worried. See, what I'm worried about here, and I've been worried about it for some time, is that males have to be believed, too. You know, I mean, anywhere in my career, I think if I were, 
I keep thinking back, like, if I were still working, if I were still doing what I was doing and so on and so forth, mm. could anybody have come forward and accused me of anything? Yeah, but you know, Alex, and the fact was that I could be accused only because there could be one crazy loon out there, you know, who suddenly goes, "Oh yeah, Alex Bennett raped me, or he took me home, and he, you know, I, you know, it's it's, and then it's very hard today to disprove. That's the problem. But Alex, I think historically you would agree that males have been believed in front of male judges with mm -hmm. male attorneys <laughs> and the women only in the past several years have yeah. felt even the freedom to report incidents to the police department do you, for do fear you, do, but yeah, that they and, would have and, the whole and, incident turned around to make them into and, and, and that's fine but, but I still say that was, that's fine but I still say what's protecting the males okay because uh, they are not believed. They are just not believed. If tomorrow somebody came forward and said, Alex Bennett uh, put his hands all over me at a party and blah, 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 and I felt very uncomfortable by that, there's no way I'm going to prove I didn't. They're going to believe her before they believe me. And even if I never met this woman before in my life, I would have a hard time convincing people that I didn't do anything. Uh, Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah, I think the governor of New York has a, an extra standard. Oh, no question. Okay, and it's part of it is part of it is his job, but part of it is his personality too. And he's a well-known person. Yeah. Right? I thought he was married. I didn't know he was. Oh married. no, he's not married. Uh, he's a single guy. You know that 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 adds into the whole story you know that he is a single guy and as a single guy how well he, he's the governor of new york and he knows he's in a position where people are going to come get him so he's got to be extra careful but i don't think he realized that and uh you know he sees an attractive woman and he starts coming on to her oh well, how is he going to get to know anybody or see if somebody wants to date him you know what what do you do how do you I mean, it gets to the point where if today I were going to go out and go over and propose uh, that a girl and I get together, a woman and I get together and go out, I would bring my lawyer with me. Or just don't do it in the workplace. I would bring my lawyer with me. I mean, it, it, how, do you, how, how do males today court? Okay. Online. Bring your mother. You bring your mother. <laughs> yes, like the, the video old days. camera. We're going back I'm to. Proof. I was going to say, Robert, we're going back to the old days when you know you used to bring your your mother used to go out on the dates with you. I yeah. wish we I wish we had a few females on the panel to hear a, a female perspective because yeah. I find myself um, wanting to do a better job of the female side. No, of no, this I understand. I, I can, I can say the female side that for so long women were just not believed when they were when they said that they had been harassed in the workplace or they lost their job because they wouldn't sleep with the boss or any number of those things and we realize that but we the pendulum can't swing all the other way to justify that this yeah, you know I, I just don't think i mean I there just are going to be there happened. are going to be women who use this to get even with somebody as an example just like a guy would do things to get even with somebody by telling lies as well. In other words, we, we have to be careful that we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and that we don't diminish the real serious cases that come forward because we're treating what, uh, what Cuomo did on the same level with a woman who gets raped. I agree with you there. You know, and that diminishes every woman who ever got raped, you know? It cheapens their cause. But I, I, I agree with you there, and I'll make this as my final point. Yeah. I think sometimes in order to achieve justice, you know, it's a little bit like when America enacted um, a, lot of, um, a lot of laws and regulations to try to give blacks a better than equal chance. Yeah. You know, like um, what's the term that 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 was used back in the days where it came to hiring? And so forth. 
Affirmative, Affirmative action. Yeah. Yes, Charlie. Thank you. At first, I think there's going to be a reaction on the part of whites that like, oh, my God, what's happening? You know, this is ridiculous. The pendulum. Well, sometimes I think the pendulum has to swing too far. In yeah, order I, to you achieve, may, it's a good point. Yeah. You know what I mean? No. In order to achieve the justice that we hope uh, an equilibrium is found at some point. Um, you, you know, at, at, for now, are we vulnerable to the odd guy being accused of something, you know, unfairly? Yeah, maybe so. But for each one of those, there were probably 25 women in the past, you know, who had an, a, a, an incident like this and kept it under their hat because socially it just wasn't going to be in their favor to come forward. A dear friend of mine was date raped back in the 50s and um, she's paid an enormous price for that. She went to the police and the police gave her a virtual mental beating about it, yeah. asking in not so many ways, what did you do to bring this on? And so now we have a victim of a serious crime, in effect, defending herself. And if the pendulum has to swing the other way a little bit in order to get justice for women like her, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. I'll take my chance. If it denies New Yorkers a governor who saved our lives, many of us, uh, is it worth it? No, but I don't think it should. That's where I agree with you about let's take things in terms of their severity. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's not equate Al Franken grabbing a woman's breasts in order to be part of a joke with Dennis Hastert, you know, coming on to youngsters in a toilet somewhere. Right. Or, you know, right. or the yeah. guy that dates 12 year olds down in Alabama. They're, you know, they're not right. equal situations. So I agree with you that he shouldn't pay an ultimate price for what he did, but I'm, I'm still saying that it's important that those women feel free to come forward and say, hey, this simply isn't right. And I agree with John, that, uh, or rather Jeff, that he's the governor and he's in a different set of shoes than you and I. Right. You know, his, his standards of behavior are are just simply different. It comes as part of the territory, in my opinion. But somebody, you know, like these women were saying, oh, we were upset by it. It was just terribly upset by it. And yet another woman, I'm sure he probably did this to dozens and dozens of women who didn't mind it because it was Andrew Cuomo and he's a good-looking guy and, hey, he came on. Guess what? Cuomo came on to me, all right? So, you know, I mean... Do we, I just want fairness to be applied here. And I don't, I don't think that it's being applied because as I say, he said, just listen to what the attorney general comes out with. He says, I'll cooperate with him a hundred percent. And then listen to what he, what the, what she, I think it's a she uh, has to say after this is all over. Uh, and uh, don't make your judgment now. That's all I'm asking. And then you turn, and then five minutes later on MSNBC, they're making judgments, you know. Uh, I think it's, t you know, let's wait to see what the attorney general says. If she Who's says... part of his administration. Well, but, right. she, but she, uh, you Which know... Which is also a bit, you know, a bit shaky. Attorney, I think she, aren't they elected? I believe I the attorney general is elected. I don't know in New York. I believe frankly. so. Elect, I, they're elected in Texas. They're right? elected here too, so they're I don't. I don't think she owes she owes him anything, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, too. here's where the downside of it is. I often say every time you have somebody who like really, you know, all of a sudden is in real trouble, like Kevin Spacey. Why isn't there anyone there to catch him? Because nobody likes him. Because there's something about him that they're happy and love the idea that now this guy's getting caught in something. And I think the same thing's true of Cuomo. I don't think Cuomo's the nicest guy to have to deal with, but he's a piece of work. And I think there are people that are out to get him just for that. I think Kevin Spacey's a great actor. I'd like to see him act. Yeah. Yeah, he's okay. But I think he's good. Yeah, Alan, you've been quiet. Anything to say about this? 
No, I'm uh, I'm 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 just enjoying the conversation. Yeah. Um, I I one of the things I like about the show. Were is... you saying that sarcastically, by the way? Yeah, I don't. No. <laughs> no, no. One of the things I like about the show is <laughs> you go, like Robert uh, is uh, a dif differing opinions and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, between you and Robert. Uh, basically, you get, you know, he's, he's, I, I fully understand, I think I fully understand his point, And I think I fully understand your point, Alex. Mm -hmm. And I think you guys are very close in in points. You know, yeah. he's, he's, he's got, excuse me, oof, sorry. Uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, I just, I, I, I think that uh, one of the nice things about the group is everybody's got a different opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, 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 John. In this day and age, do you think uh, a book like Lolita would be able to get published? Yes. I don't. I don't think it would. Well, if, I, it, if it did, it would be forgotten. It's a good. It's a good question. I mean, it is a good. It question. is about a young, a, t a yeah. young girl who an uh, old well, older man about a falls in rapes and murders, and uh, you know the, he's the hero of the whole story. Well, he murders. He, he like, doesn't. He doesn't rape. It's a statutory rape because she's underage. But and in the book, he rapes her too. Why is that not rape? And, and he murders. He murders his her mother. Yeah. And he, he what, murders. Spoiler his, alert. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's obsessed by her. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, and uh, guy. you know, but well, American Beauty touched on that a little. Yeah, yeah, doing that a lot, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, absolutely. Let me see here. I was turning on the wrong thing here. Alex oh, he, is he, looking for oh, the know, goodbye music. You know what? I never did. I never put on the uh, uh, the uh, audio for the uh, show tonight. <laughs> I, well, yeah, I just, I, I didn't even start the audio version of the show. Uh, let oh me God. see here. I'm trying to get to. Uh, we can some... start over. I got another hour. You got another hour? <laughs> sure. Uh, let's go to music here. Conversation. Yeah. conversation. Let's call it a, call it a wrap here. Okay. How's that? Good, eh? good, eh? good talk. Good. Yeah. Good talk. Good talk. Alan, let's move, move on. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with you, Robert. Great. No good problem. to hear that. Anyway, thank you, uh, 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 thank you uh, Alan, and thank you uh, to John Larkin, and thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Charlie, and thank you to Robert. Thank you, people, for coming on here when I said I wasn't even going to do a show tonight because it looked so grim. Bill didn't watch it because he said there was I, no I took spell. it personally. <laughs> you took it personally. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were trying to hide or something. Something like yeah. that. Anyway, everybody, yeah. give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big... Uh, wave goodbye back at you and that's our citizen panel for tonight uh and uh, they're they're going their way and i'll go mine uh why don't the rest of you stay right here because jack bishop is next with the intersection okay and uh then i'll be back again tomorrow night same time same station in life in the meantime if you see her tell her i love her and by the way be safe out there and wear a mask, okay? Good night, everybody.